Glory to God. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. How many are here, amen, are, that are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Let me hear an amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I just want to welcome everyone that are here today and those that are listening in uh, Facebook this morning, uh, live stream. I'd like to welcome our uh, Livingstone Family Church and our extended family uh, on the live stream this morning. Good morning and welcome on this blessed Sunday morning. Amen. I'd like to welcome those that are going to be listening later. Amen. A good thank you. Great thank you for looking at our live stream. And be blessed this morning. And for those that are on their way, amen, I'd like to say, uh, be careful, get here on time, and be here uh, safe, amen. amen. But the Word of God says this morning, amen. I'd like to open up with the Word, amen. Yes, God. That way uh, we can see what God has to say, amen, to each of us individually. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 11 says therefore comfort each other and edify one another yes just as you also are doing mm. amen? amen yesterday we had a men's breakfast amen and here in the house of god is where we can edify one another yes. not only here yes. but you can call a brother or a sister yes. amen not just any brother or sister, amen? A sister or a brother or a family member that has Christ, amen? And that'll help you, that'll edify you, that won't edify you with things of the world. You know, we want to be edified with things of Christ yes. in our lives, amen? And I mean, we have the world that surrounds us on a daily basis, amen? Everywhere we turn, and look, the world is there. Right. Amen. And we need more edifying, godly edifying. Amen. Every single day. And we need our brothers yes. and sisters in Christ right. to edify us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 12 says, We and we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor mm. among you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. And are over you. In the Lord and admonish you like our like our leaders, amen. Our pastors, amen. We need our pastors, we need our leaders in the church, amen. And they recognize you, amen. They're watching, they're watching them. We had these brothers that came from uh Floresville, Eagle Pass yesterday. Amazing service. Uh the word was amazing. The brothers all testified. They were sharing. And we needed that to let go of a lot of things yesterday as brothers in Christ. And that's what we had these leaders here yesterday to encourage us. And they recognized one of the brothers was saying, I always see you. The last time we were here, I always see you laboring. Yes. Laboring for the Praise Lord. God. Not, not laboring for man. But laboring for the Lord. Yes. And, and then I recognize that in you. And I saw that today again. And I'm like, I didn't notice. I was just doing my thing. Yeah. Amen. What I need to do. Yeah. But I, that encourage, that was an encouragement. Amen. amen. So this morning, amen, be encouraged yeah. here in the house of God. Yeah. Every time you come to the house of God, you're going to be encouraged. You're going to be edified. Yeah. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is going to lift. Amen. It's going to lift you up and edify you. Amen. Let's pray this morning and let's give God thanks. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, first of all, Father God, because you're a good God. We recognize, Father God, that you love us, Father God. Even though when we fail, when we fall, Father God, could be a thousand times in a day, Father God, but you still love us father you still recognize us you still edify us father god your spirit father god still surrounds us father god your holy ghost father god still comes and encourages father god through the word 
through prayer, through a brother, through a sister, through a leader. Amen. But we want to thank you, Father God, just for waking us up this morning, for letting us be here, Father God. Letting us be here in our right minds. Amen. We're not in a hospital bed, Father God. We're not in jail, Father God. We want to thank you, Father, for your loving kindness and your goodness. And we pray for those, Father God, that are on their way, Father, for a safe journey, Father God, this morning, Father. And we pray for our extended family on Facebook, Father God. May your Holy Spirit reach out, Father God, and touch them this morning. And we praise you in the mighty name that's above all names, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah.
us in Genesis 1 1 that in the beginning that God created the heavens and the earth. And it was without form and darkness filled the earth. But the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord began to hover, began to move over the waters. And the Spirit of the Lord just began to invade that dark world where. God said, I gotta replenish the earth and I gotta put my spirit back on this planet, back on back on this earth. Yes. And likewise, the Spirit of God yes. is here this morning yes. to remove the darkness, to remove the yes. fear and the doubt, whatever you are struggling with. Holy spirit, yes. We believe the Spirit of God is here this morning yes. to change hearts and to change lives. Yes. Let's make it our prayer this morning. As the Spirit was born over the water, Spirit come through over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was born.
to church. Hallelujah. This Sunday morning, no better place to be to start your week out, amen, than honoring the Lord, amen, in his house. So this morning, we're going to get ready to receive our tithe and offering, and we want to thank you in advance, each and every one of you that sows into the kingdom of God and trusts, most of all, the prompting of what the Lord has already put into your hearts to give today, amen. You know, the word God says that, and we... You know, we phrase it every now and then. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, it says, Now may he, meaning the Lord, Jesus, God the Father, who supplies seed to the sower, yes. we are the sowers, and bread for food. How many of you ate this past week? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, God supplied that food for you. Yeah. Amen. And for me. Supply and multiply the seed you have already sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So this morning, it is God himself who increases, who provides. As we sow, he replenishes. As we give, he supplies. As we trust him, he continues to show us his grace his favor, Hallelujah. and his love toward us. This morning, be encouraged that God, he's got you. Yeah. The word of God has promises so overwhelming to us in the natural that we would, if he gave us all those blessings and promises at once, we wouldn't be able to contain it. But I believe that every day he shows us little things, sometimes big things, but he shows us, even in the smallest of things, that he's with us, that he's for you, he's not against you, that he loves you. Yes, yes. God is not walking around in heaven with a hammer, That's right. trying to knock us over That's right. the minute we displease him. Yes. Is he holy? Yes, he is holy. Is he righteous? Yes, he is righteous. Does he require upright living of course yes. but God is love yes. Yes. and because he is love he is gracious and he is merciful Come on. Yes, he is. Yes. so be encouraged that today your seed of faith yes. it honors the Lord and when you honor God he is pleased with you he loves you you're his children and there are three areas that I want to encourage you with today. I want you to realize that releasing new seed will keep you from repeating old seasons in your life. How can we expect new seasons to approach and for us to walk into when we keep repeating and planting old seed that we've always planted? Meaning that if we give but we give doubting and not give according to what God's already asked of us we're continuing the pattern of what we've had a year ago or two years ago but I believe as pastor has mentioned this past week I believe on Wednesday this is a season of explosion that the next six months for God's people for his church as a whole not just this church, but the church that preaches the truth and the uncompromising word of God and still stands firm in faith in what God's word says. There's coming a moment of release of his blessing. But if we're not ready, we'll miss it. If we're not prepared, we'll miss it. So that means that whatever your giving was, whatever that seed was, six months ago or in 2021 last year don't let it repeat itself don't let it repeat itself don't let doubt repeat itself don't let confusion repeat itself don't let the enemy's tactics overwhelm you these next six months of 2022 because it's not worry how you start but it's how you finish and so as pastor has declared and has prophesied that the next six months, we need to be ready, church. We need to be ready. 
not only for the, our church family, but for our personal families as well. God is working in your family, in your children, in your marriage. You may not see it in its wholeness right now, but he's doing it. He's touching your family. He's touching your kids. He's speaking to your family things that we can't speak into them, but he is. So realize the new seed is in your hand. Also resist the enemy's lies to try to change what God has already put in your heart and what you need to do with your new seed. Realize, resist, and remember. Remember that the promises of God will never, never leave you empty. And when you move according to his promises, not on impulse, on, on impulse, not on just wishful thinking, not when you move with his promises, when you move alongside his word, when you're moving with God. Oh, I know somebody's receiving it today. When you're moving with him and not on your emotions, his promises will never leave you empty. Amen. So you're here today, maybe you're watching us, maybe you will later. Where's the new seed? What is in your possession that God has already asked? That if you would trust Him with this newness, this seed, if you trust Him, what can He do for you? What will your trust impress God to do for you, your family. And we're not just, we're not talking old cars, houses. Yes, all that is great. But as we've said over and over, what use is a five bedroom home when you're divided in your own house? There's no peace. You go to bed arguing every night. Your children are wasted and strung out, fornicating in those five bedrooms in your face, disgracing the holiness and the righteousness of God. What use is the new car when people in it are dishonoring their lives and misusing and abusing the blessing? See, many of us have attained blessing, but many times we abuse it. We abuse the new job God's promoted us to. We've abused the new house that God has so blessed us with. We abuse the blessings many times because we get selfish, because we hoard, because we say, oh no, now I have this. I can't share with anybody. I can't release anything new because now I have this payment. Now I have this mortgage. Now I have this car note. And God is asking but didn't I bless you with that? Didn't I make a way for you to be in that home that you're in? Didn't I provide a way when you thought there was no way? And I'm speaking for myself. Because God will always supply the blessing. And then in return, he wants to see what you're going to do with it. In return, he wants to see that's what free will is, church. We do have free will. If we were all robots, we'd all be great serving God. We'd all just be robotically, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. But God didn't create us that way. He created us with our own mind, our emotions, our feelings, our own way to make decisions. And that all comes to a place where we surrender. We surrender and we say, Lord, it's hard it's hard sometimes because my flesh and my brain don't want to register what my heart is registering with you. But God says, just take that step. Just take that step. So no one needs to give on impulse today. Nobody needs to give on any kind of emotional roller coaster ride because that's not what the house of God is for. The house of God is to feed you his word. And if he has supplied the sower has supplied seed to the sowers, which are you and I. He's given us food. He's given us shelter. He's given us so much. 
how can he not continue to supply as we continue to sow? So this morning we're going to pray that new seed not just be released, but that new seed come our way in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for new seasons, Father, this month. We thank you for new, Father God, seed that we can sow, Lord God, to trust you more, to have faith, to have a greater faith and have a greater hope. Lord, you are our source. You are the one and very person that we can put our trust in today. So, Lord, as we give, we give, Father God, in a, in a newness of faith. Lord, we want our faith to expand. We don't, we don't want last year's faith. We don't want last year's hope. We want greater hope. We want greater faith. And, Lord, so today we take those steps forward. We take steps forward with you, in you, and through you. That, Lord, you will be able to give us the strength, the ability, the peace, the sound-mindedness. Lord, you are everything that we need today as we sow this seed of faith. And Lord, we thank you in advance and we pray, Father God, for increase, increase, Father, like never before, an explosion in the last six months of 2022. Lord, it's what you declared over your people. And we declare it today with hope, with faith, and most of all, trusting you for the outcome. In the name above all names, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Come on up today and give to the Lord cheerfully.
to our YouTube page, amen, and uh, we welcome you to share the word of God, amen, because that is the power that releases the chains and strongholds of our lives, amen. Well, this morning, amen, we're going to get ready to receive the word of the Lord, so with us today, Pastor Mark Monta. God bless you, church. Let's give God one more hand of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious people, amen. Praise God. You know, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. He wasn't sad. He wasn't mad. Right. He was amen. glad to be in church. Yes. Yes. Amen. I'll tell you what. I'd rather be in the house of God than lying on a hospital amen. bed somewhere. That's right. I'd rather be in the house of God than mm. incarcerated yep. and locked up. Mm. I'd rather be in the house of God more than anything. Yes. Amen. Yes. I want to thank all the brothers that came and supported what we did on yesterday. Mm. The men's breakfast was a blessing. And it was beautiful, man. I'll tell you what, none of the guys wanted to leave. You know, that's how you know church is good. Yeah. Amen. When nobody wants to go home. That's Amen. Right. And we just, just lingers around. And, man, we were just fellowshipping and having yes. food. And Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for some sisters that came and also yes. helped us. Thank you, Jesus. Um, with organizing yes. everything. And, yes. and uh, you. you know, by the time we were done, there were no tacos left. <laughs> a lot of people got some leftovers and took some home with them. And, and that's all good because it's all about being a blessing. Yes. Amen. Yes. We just want to be a blessing to the people of God. And, and uh, it was exciting. I was refreshed, you know. And so if you're wondering why I'm a little, I'm a little uh, intoxicated. Oh, it's because yeah. I, 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 I've been drinking from the new wine. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> Uh, you know, Christians, we don't get hangovers. Yeah. We get carryovers. Yeah, yeah, amen. Mm. Someone told me one time, Pastor, when I get saved, do I stop drinking? I said, no, you don't stop drinking. You just start drinking the new wine. That's right. Mm. Yeah, amen. You just start getting drunk on the things that really matter. Yeah, yeah. You get drunk on the Holy Ghost, amen? Yes, Praise yes, God. Yes. So I'm a little, I'm a little intoxicated. <laughs> you know, I, I got refreshed this weekend, and that's why it's good. That's why it's good to come to church because, you know, you just get refreshed. I love the scripture that Brother Eddie opened up with Man. this morning. How that yes. we come together, we're called to encourage one another. Man. I didn't come to put you down. I came to lift you up. Amen. Yes. And I came to let you know that God's hand is on your life. Yes. You yes. have a calling. You have a purpose. And the best days are not behind you. Right. But the best days are in front of you. Amen. Yeah. 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 Can we stand to our feet this morning? And let's get into the word of the Lord. If you have your Bibles... Go with me to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 20. 1 Kings, chapter 20. And I'm going to begin reading from verse 35. Amen. Amen. 1 Kings, chapter 20. You're wondering where 1 Kings is at. It's right before 2 Kings. <laughs> Amen. I guess some of y'all still haven't got your Starbucks just yet, right? <laughs> I've been up since 5 in the morning, so I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little kind of wired up in the spirit. Amen. Praise God. So 1 Kings chapter 20, 
Let's begin, church, with verse 35. I'm going to make my way down to verse 43. 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 35. Now a certain man of the sons of the prophets said to his neighbor, by the word of the Lord, strike me or hit me, please. And the man refused to strike him. Verse 36. And then he said to him, because you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God, surely as soon as you depart from me, a lion shall kill you. And as soon as he left him, a lion found him and killed him. Mm. Verse 37. And he found another man and said, strike me, please. And so the man struck him, inflicting or wounding him. And then the prophet departed and he waited for the king by the road. And he disguised himself with a bandage over his eyes. And now as the king passed by, he cried out to the king and he said, your battle. And there are a man came over and brought a man to me and said, guard this man. If by any means he is missing, your life shall be for his life or else you shall be or pay a talent of silver. And then verse 40 says, and then while while your servant was busy here and there, he was gone. Mm. He was gone. And then, then your Bible says, verse God, while your servant, let me read it again, verse 40, while his servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And then the king of Israel said to him, so shall your judgment also be on yourself because you decided it. And then verse 41, and he was hastened to take the bandage away from his eyes. And the king of Israel recognized him as one of the prophets. And then verse 42, and then he said to him, thus says the Lord, because you have left or let slip out of your hand a man from whom I appointed utter destruction, Therefore, your life shall go for his life and your people for his people. And then we'll pray after verse 43. And then the king of Israel went into the house, sullen or, or angry or mad and displeased and came to Samaria. And so this morning, we have an interesting story, a very unique story in the word of God about how God shows us the importance and the power of responsibility and this morning I want to talk about living responsibly living responsibly let's bow our heads and pray remain standing father we thank you for your word today we thank you Lord for the hunger and the thirst that you have put in our hearts Lord to hear your word we pray oh God that we do no violence to your word and that hearts and lives will be changed by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit Lord, I pray that you anoint me afresh and anoint your people to receive this word that you laid in my heart and that God, hearts and lives will be changed by the power of Almighty God. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we do no violence to your word, but that we be obedient to your voice and that you, Father, would do what only you can do by way and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, that all of our hope is in Jesus. All of our hope is in you. Thank you, Lord, that you have forgiven us of all of our sins and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. Yes. Have it your way today, Lord, and we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. 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 You may be seated, people of God. I pray today that you grab a hold of this truth and these keys and these nuggets that I'm going to share with you because I believe they're going to be life-changing. Because I believe that more than ever, what many of us in our world are lacking and sad to say, even God's people sometimes mm -hmm. are not taking the necessary responsibility that they need in their lives to grow as a believer. Whether you're a father, whether you're a mother, whether you're a son or a daughter, whether you're uh, just a child of God, just trying to live, live for God in this world, this dark world, uh, we need to be more responsible. Amen. Responsibility is something that God wants us all to begin to practice. That's 
right. You see, every opportunity, and I believe God is a God of opportunities. There are so many opportunities awaiting us. I believe every day when we wake up in the morning, we get out of bed, we take a shower, we brush our teeth, and we start our day. I tell you what, that's a day of opportunity. Amen. That's a day that you never know what God can do. Right. God can surprise you. I believe that God is a God of surprises. Yes, God is a God that can blow your mind. We heard a testimony yesterday of a pastor from uh, Eagle Pass, uh, Pastor Martin. He's, he's been here before, and, and uh, he was sharing how that they needed over six thousand dollars. They needed over six thousand dollars to put in some electricity in their church facility, and uh, and so they have been using a generator for a while. But they needed to get that electricity done. Guess what? They didn't have the money. They didn't have a dime in their bank. But they wrote a check anyway by faith. They wrote a check and they said, "You know what? We're going to believe God." Yes, sir. And then shortly thereafter, three thousand came in. They still didn't have the full amount yet. But 3000 came. And then by the time that check cleared, guess what? It got paid for. $6,000 plus. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. And so we know that God can do miracle signs and wonders. We know that God is a God of opportunities. But, that, but here's the message this morning. Every opportunity. Hear this preacher out today. Every opportunity that God gives us, it comes with responsibility. Yes. I want to say that again. Let it sink in this morning. Mm. Every challenge, every door that God opens, every opportunity that God is going to afford you with and give you, mm -hmm. it comes with great responsibility. Amen. If you're believing God for something new, something better, something bigger, I don't care what it is, a new car, a new house, new job, new income, new place of residency, whatever it may be, spiritual, physical, mental, it is going to come with great responsibility. Yes. And so that door, when it opens, if we don't take the responsibility, then we could very well lose the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yep. If we don't take the rightful steps in order for us to be responsible, then we can lose it quick, fast, and a hurry. See, I don't pray for more money. I don't pray for more people to come to our church. And, you know, nickels, numbers, and noses. I don't pray for that. I pray that I be more responsible. Yes, yes. That I be a faithful and a good steward of what God has already entrusted me. Because when you experience promotion, yeah. You know how you get promoted? Mm -hmm. When you're overqualified for your present yes, position. Yes, yeah. amen, yeah. amen. I was at a restaurant the other day, and I noticed a gentleman, and he was walking around with one of those little speakers in his, in his ear. And, uh, and I noticed that he didn't have the regular attire, the regular clothing of a regular waiter. Mm -hmm. But I recognized his face, that he used to be a waiter. Because I remember him serving us several times at this particular restaurant. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at him, I said, wait a minute. I said, did you get promoted? He said, yes, I did. With a big smile on his face. Hallelujah. He said, yes, I did. I said, well, you know what? You were a good waiter. You were a good waiter to us. And we appreciate it. And I saw him just going back and forth and helping people. Do you went to each table in our section there and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and just begin to ask, did you, do you need anything? You, is everything okay? Can I can I refill your drinks? Can I uh, get you something extra? Is there everything all right? And uh, and he was just being a good manager now that he got promoted. So listen, as God blesses you and God promotes you, you need to be more responsible. Man. That man that I saw, I used to be our waiter. Guess what? He got blessed. He's got a better income now. He's got a higher income. But he's also got more responsibility. Yes, yes. Are y'all here this morning? Yes, yes sir. amen. I want to talk, I'm talking this morning about living responsibly. How God has called us to live and take every opportunity that he's given us, but we do it with diligence. Mm -hmm. We do it with responsibility. See, if we don't, if we are able, here's the message today. If you and I are able to realize and recognize our responsibility, We'll be able to recognize our destiny. Amen. Yes. 
Yes, yes. If we say, God, give me more responsibility, you know what happens? We walk into our destiny. Mm -hmm. Doors just fly open. When you say to the Lord, Lord, I, I just want to be a better Christian. Mm -hmm. I just want to honor you in my life. Guess what happens? More opportunities. You have a greater influence in people's lives. When you say, Lord, I just want to grow in your word and I just want to come to church on Sunday morning. And I want to be there on Wednesday night and get fed the word. And I want to even maybe at times be in the house of God on Monday night corporate prayer. Somebody said one time, well, you know, why do we need to come to Monday night prayer? You know, we, I can pray at home. Yeah, but there's something powerful when we connect. Yes, there's something yes. powerful when we Amen. link arms and link hands together. That's right, that's right. Because the Bible says when two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst. Yes, praise yes, God. Yes, and so, Hallelujah. anybody love to pray? Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. So, in our text this morning, it is an interesting story. Now, let me give you a little history of this text. At one time, the king of Syria, who were the enemies of God, of Israel, came against King Ahab. And the children of Israel, the northern kingdom, the kingdom of God back then was divided. There was a northern kingdom called Israel and the southern kingdom called Judah. Both were God's people, but they were at that time segregated, divided. And so a king by the name of Benedict, King Benedict was the king of Syria, which were the greatest enemies of Israel at that time. And he came against them often. And here he shows up again trying to do battle. With the enemy. The Bible says that he had a large army, a great army. And so naturally it intimidated King Ahab and his army. And he panicked. He got fearful. He didn't know how to do it. But messengers came. And thank uh, God, he used even young people. The Bible says young, a young officer, a young servant came and, and gave a message to the king that don't worry, God's going to give you the victory. I thank the Lord that God is raising up young people, yes, amen, yes. to be messengers of God's yes, word. Yes, amen. How, how do I know that God can use all of our young people for, yes, to serve the Lord? Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, guys, when we saw, we were, we were at the men's breakfast, man, we, the second time we had Brother Joshua yeah. come, not my son, but another Joshua, he came and he was ministering in the, uh, in the guitar and the, the music, and it was just another anointing, a wonderful anointed time of fellowship and amen. worship to God. Yes, yeah. amen. And, um, and, uh, you know, he tells me, the brother of Joshua tells me, he says, uh, Pastor, I've been ha had a vision. I said, really? I said, what was your vision about? He said, I had a vision, Pastor, that I was singing and playing at your church. Hallelujah. And I said, well, thank you, Jesus. He got so blessed. He got so encouraged by that vision that he saw him playing at a church. He didn't know if it was a men's breakfast or a regular service or whatever. But he just saw a vision that he was coming. He just thought it was going to be Saturday. So guess what? He was scheduled to work on Saturday, but he took off. He said, Pastor, I didn't really want to use my PTO. I had other plans for my PTO, but I had to obey the amen, Lord. Amen. I had to do where God oh, called yeah, me to do. Yeah. And I told him boldly in the name of Jesus, I said, God is going to compensate for your loss. I said, God is going to compensate because you honor the Lord. Because you took a step of faith. Amen? Yes, amen. And let me encourage you, people of God, that when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, mm -hmm. that everything else will be added to you. Yes, it will. You don't have to worry. If God put it in your heart to be in church, he'll make a way where there seems to be no way. That's right. He knows how to pay your bills. Yes, he yes. knows how to take care of your needs. Yes. Amen. Just yes. trust him. Yes. Just believe in God. Amen. And then, uh, and I thought about it. I said, you know why he had a vision? You know why Joshua and young people have been it? Because the Bible tells us in the book of Joel that in the last days, young men will have visions. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I told the Lord the other day, I said, Lord, I come I don't have that many visions anymore. He said, because you're getting a little older. <laughs> he said, young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. Yeah. Amen. And when my brother Joshua left, when he left the uh, service yesterday, he said, Pastor, now don't forget, text me, call me. If you ever have a vision of me, Hallelujah. if you ever have a dream about me, mm. I said, I will praise God. <laughs> so Amen. God used this young people, a young man to say to the King Ahab, mm. don't worry about it. Don't worry about King Benedict. Mm. Don't worry about the Syrian great army. I'm going to bless you. And guess what? By God's miraculous providential power, mm. he gave them the victory over that large army of Syria. Mm. However, 
King Ahab, who was not a righteous king, he was one of the wickedest kings married to Jezebel. Even though God used him to bring victory again over the Assyrians. And the reason why God gave him the victory, even though he was an evil, wicked king, mm -hmm. is because God said, I'm going to show my power to all. I'm going to let everybody know through this victory over this great army of Syria that I'm the Lord of all. Yeah. That I'm the King of kings. That I'm the yeah. Lord of lords. Yeah. That I'm the Lion of the tribe of Judah. That I'm the great I am that I am and whom I serve. And so when God gives us victory, you need to understand something. When God gives you victory in your home, when God gives you victory in your family, when God gives you victory in your finances, it's not so you to get a big head and say, look at what God did for me. It's so God's name can be magnified. It's so Jesus can be exalted. It's so the Lord's name. Hallelujah. God can use anybody. You ought to just be glad God's using you. Hallelujah. I told the Lord, and I tell him periodically, I said, Lord, you can remove me if you have to. I just want to be a part of what you're doing. Amen. Yes. Nobody needs to know my name. Listen, if you leave this church and you remember my suit, you remember my tie, you remember how beautiful looking this church is, then you missed it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but if you can see Jesus this morning, high and lifted up, if you can see his love, if you can see his power, if you can experience his forgiveness, Thank you, Lord. then you came for the right reason. Thank you, Jesus. Anytime God gives us victory, it's not about us. The victory is for the Lord's sake. Amen. The yes. victory is to let the devil know yes. you're not going to win. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. So don't get a big head when God blesses you. That's right. Don't act like, oh, look at me now. I'm blessed. Mm -mm. No, it's for God's glory. Right. It's for God's honor. Yes, it is. When God gives you a job, you better give back that 10% to the Lord and say, Lord, this, right you gave right me this now. job. Yeah, that's right. You gave me this opportunity. Yeah. How can I be selfish? How can I be greedy? Yeah. How can I be self-centered? Because without you, God, I'm nothing. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. And King Ahab missed it. Even though God gave him the victory, guess what happened? He spared the king of Syria a lot. Mm -hmm. And God had told him, kill everything. Mm -hmm. Utter destruction was the command. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, I'm, I'm going to make a treaty with him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make an alliance for him. Mm -hmm. We got to be careful that when God gives us the victory, yeah. we need to get total, complete victory. Yeah. Don't settle to be a lukewarm Christian. That's right. Amen. We got a lot of people today, people of God, that want a little bit of God and a little bit of the world. Can I, can I, can I preach this morning? Amen. Oh, Amen. Yes. Today we got many Christians that they, they want to mingle with the world, flirt with sin, and then still come to church and say, I love you, Jesus. Yes. I love you, Lord. Mm. No, God's looking for total victory. Yeah, right. God wants you to come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Yeah. Amen. God doesn't want anything in your life that hinders his moving and operation in your life. Mm -hmm. Anything that stifles your growth as a believer, God doesn't want it in your life. Amen. It's sad to say King Ahab is a picture of the world, of, of the church. Mm -hmm. But we want to hang on after God gives us victory. We still want to hang on to our worldly tendencies. After God saves our soul and gets us out of that hospital, yeah. we want to go back to that vomit that God delivered us from. Right. How many know somebody like that? Right. God did a great miracle in their life, but they're not in the house of God. Yeah. They don't even have enough reverence to say, God, I'm going to go to your house and say thank you. Yeah. Most of the time when I come to church, mm. I don't come really to preach. I just thank God. God says I can preach. Amen. I thank God he gives me the privilege to preach. But I'd be here even if I wasn't preaching. Right, amen. I'd be here this morning if I wasn't the keynote speaker. Amen. Most of our men's breakfast, I don't preach. Mm -hmm. I think I've just preached on the first one. The one we got started over in, was it January, guys? February? I think in February. That's the last time I preached our men's breakfast. I don't need to preach. I get fed hearing the word of God. Amen. See, when you're hungry for God, you'll receive. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, King Ahab spared King Benedict, King of Syria. He didn't kill him like God told him to, to destroy him, to declare and proclaim the victory of God. 
So God gives them another chance. Oh, I'm going to thank God for his mercy. Yes, sir. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that even when I mess up, God's there. Even when I've been critical and cynical, yes. God forgives me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I love that prayer that Jesus prayed when he was on the cross. What was the first thing that came out of Jesus' mouth? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. A lot of times we don't know what we're doing. And we say things in the flesh. We say things out of our impulse. We say things that we had not been in prayer. We had not been in the word. And we say things and we're like, e -hole. what did I say? But thank God for his mercy. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Thank God for his mercy this yes. morning. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And here comes the mercy of God. God sends another prophet, another message, messenger to this king of Ahab. Even though he disobeyed the Lord, even though he didn't rightfully acknowledge God for the total victory. So now a prophet comes. This is an interesting story. The Bible says that a prophet comes to another prophet and says, hit me. What? Hit me. Strike me, your Bible says. I'm not going to do that. He said, if you don't strike me, a lion's going to come and kill you. He refused. Because you got to understand something. Why? Why was God so serious about that man hitting him? Because when a prophet spoke, it was like the voice of God was speaking. Amen. See, some of you don't get it. A lot of times you get critical about a pastor, what he says or what he doesn't say, but you don't realize that there's a voice inside his voice. Yeah. Oh, I lost some of you. You don't realize that the man of God is speaking on behalf of the Lord. Amen. And so when that prophet said, hit me, he wasn't saying hit me in the flesh. He was saying, God says, hit me. He said, no, I won't. Okay, as soon as you leave me, a lion's going to kill you. Guess what happened? As soon as he left that prophet, because he refused not to obey the man's word, but the word of God, mm -hmm. a lion devoured, devoured him. Mm -hmm. A lion killed him. But God wasn't through. Here comes another prophet, another man. And he says the same thing. Hey, hit me. Where do you want me to hit you? He said some translation says he got a stick. Your Bible may not say it, but there's some versions of the Bible that say he got a stick. And he began to hit him. We don't know exactly where he hit him. More than likely, he hit him on his face, somewhere around his face. Because after he hit him, which was symbolic of obeying the word of God. See, how can I know that if we want real victory in our lives, we got to obey the word of God. Yeah. All these blessings shall come upon you yeah. if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God. Yeah. You don't have to doubt it. If even if it doesn't make sense, obey God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So he hits him. More than likely on his face. And the Bible says in some translations, a little bit different. One translation says he put then he put a bandage over his face. Because he was afflicted. He was wounded. Some of y'all looking like, what's going on here? It does not make sense. It's going to make sense. So he puts a bandage over his head. Some say he even put a hat. One version even says he put a hat over his head. And he's probably walking like this now. Picture a bandage over his eye, his face. And picture a hat covering him. How many know that? Sometimes when you put a hat on, it disguises your normal appearance. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Anybody that wore a baseball hat, baseball hat, yeah. you looked at somebody and said, oh, I didn't know that was you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I didn't see that with me. Everybody knows me because, you know, belong. <laughs> I'm bald-headed, right? <laughs> Praise God. But when I put on a hat, is, it, is that you, Pastor Mark? <laughs> see, if I put on a hat, you probably won't recognize me. Wow. And especially if I'm walking around like this. <laughs> and especially if I got a bandage over my face. Yeah, right. hmm. So what was he trying to do? He was trying to gain access to the king. Because he knew already, listen to this. He knew already, that man of God, that prophet. He knew that King Ahab was not listening to the voice of God. Hmm. But how did I know that God knows how to get our attention? Yes, sir. Yes. 
Some of you will not listen to a preacher, but you listen to a truck driver. Because maybe that is in your sphere of influence. Some of you may not hear a preacher, you know, on television. Now, I'm just not into that. But God can speak to you through a coworker yeah. mm -hmm. who loves God, yeah. who loves Jesus. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. How many know God knows how to speak to us? Yeah. He uses a lot of disguises, a lot of things, puts bandages over people that so that you will not look at them in any way different so you can receive that message. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he told him to hit me. He said, hit me because I'm going to disguise myself as a wounded soldier. So that I can get the attention of King Ahab. Because King Ahab's not gonna listen to me if I come in my three-piece suit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. King Ahab's not gonna listen to me when I come in my Sunday attire. Mm -hmm. King Ahab's not gonna listen to me if I look like a Christian, act like a Christian, smell like a Christian. Mm -hmm. So sometimes God has to put people right in our path that don't look like Christians. To give you, thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got to pay attention. God can speak to you in different ways. He can speak to somebody full of tattoos. Well, yeah. He can speak to somebody with all their hair messed up. Mm. And they don't look like Jesus. They don't look like God. Mm. That's why the Bible says to be careful. To not forget to entertain strangers. That's right. Because those strangers might be Jesus in disguise. Hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Finish the story. So he's bandaged up. Probably got a hat on. Disguising himself. Inside, in reality, in truth, he's a prophet of the Lord. But he's pretending like a wounded soldier. Got bandages, has wounds. And he finally sees K -A King Ahab. And they meet up somehow, some way. And he opens up a conversation with King Ahab. Obviously, King Ahab was listening because he didn't look like a prophet. He didn't look like a man of God. That's how evil some people are. Mm -hmm. That they won't give the time of the day to someone that's serving the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So he opens up his mouth, the prophet, and he says, uh, King Ahab, I got to tell you a story. Tell me. He says, well, a servant... One day, was in the middle, the thick of the battle, a war. I mean, it was right in the middle of chaos, right in the middle of battle. And he found a prisoner from the enemy's camp. And he captured that prisoner. He captured that soldier from the other camp, from the enemy. And he was told by that other soldier who captured him to the servant, he was told, servant, I gotta go back to battle, but you take care of him, don't let him go. Don't let him be free. Don't let him escape. I gotta go back to battle, but you take care of him. And if he escapes, then it's either gonna be your life on, online, or you're gonna have to pay some silver, quite a bit amount of money. In other words, it's your responsibility to take care of this prisoner from the enemy's camp. And he said, if not, your life will be taken. And then all of a sudden, in that conversation, King Ahab interrupts. And he says, without any more explanation of that prayer, he knew where he was going. He said, well, you said yourself. What will happen? He will die. He said, no. The prophet said, no. That's not what God says. He took off his bandage. Ooh. Takes off his hat. Mm. Thus saith the Lord. Yes. Because you let go and free and let the man that's caused so much trouble for Israel King Benedict, Benedict, your life will be taken. You're that man that was given the responsibility to guard him, take care of him, 
and eventually kill him because of the problems and the trouble that he was causing the people of God. And now, thus saith the Lord, your life. And he recognized now this is a man of God. He knew now, the Bible says he recognized that he was a prophet of the Lord. And he said, your life will be for his life. In other words, you're going to die because of what you've done. You've allowed the enemy of God's people to do whatever he wants to do. After the victory, after the blessing, yeah. you still let the enemy yeah. go free. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened? He had a time right there, church. He had a time to repent. Mm -hmm. He had a moment. Yeah. Because anytime God speaks to you, even right now, anytime God speaks to you, yeah. it's not to condemn you. Mm -hmm. It's to convict you so that you can make the necessary changes that you need to make in your very life. Yes. Yes. That you can begin to take responsibility for your actions. Yes. Yes. God's not trying to hate you. God's not trying to... In fact, when God gives us a word, it's because He loves us. Yes. Right. Yeah. When God corrects us, it's because He loves us. Amen. Amen. King Ahab had a moment right there. He could have repented. He could have been broken by God right there. But the Bible says that he got angry and he fell and sunk into heavy depression. So much so that he didn't talk to nobody. He went back home and he sunk into heavy depression. Spirit of heaviness came over him. That's the way many people are. They let the devil lie to them that there's no hope. And you know, I, I, I started going to church, but I'm just struggling. I better not go back to church anymore. Mm. Now that's the lie of the enemy. Yes, sir. That's the lie of the devil for get you to stay yes, home. Yes, yes. See, a lot of us that are not in church today, mm -hmm. everywhere, in different churches everywhere, mm -hmm. you know why a lot of people are not in church today? Because they've had limited victory. Oh, yeah. 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 oh no, they were touched by God. Mm -hmm. Oh no, they had victory. But it was short-lived. They never took care of Benedict. Mm. They never took care of that enemy that keeps harassing them. Mm. They still want to play with it. They still want to compromise with it. They still want to flirt with it. Mm. And that's why you see them some Sundays and some Sundays you don't. Yeah. That's why you see them come to church every now and then and then they'll come because guess what? That's the way their relationship with God is. Yeah. It's a roller coaster ride yeah. up and down. Yes, yes. Mm. We can't kill Benedict. We still want Benedad in our lives. Mm -hmm. And church, until we get to that place that we want total victory, mm -hmm. it limits our growth. Yeah. It limits our walk with God. Right. And we, like King Ahab, instead of getting changed, we get mad. Mm -hmm. We get depressed. Mm -hmm. Think nobody loves us. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares for us. Right. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln once said, he said, you cannot escape the responsibility of tomorrow by avoiding it today. That's right. You cannot escape the responsibility of tomorrow by avoiding it today. John 9, 4 says a powerful truth about Jesus when he was on this earth. John 9, 4 talks about the motive of Jesus when he had his ministry for three and a half years on this earth, beginning at 30 years of age. When Jesus did the work of God, he said, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Because the night is coming when no one will be able to work. Jesus said, I got to be responsible for the day. Unlike King Ahab, what's the first thing he did? He pointed the finger. Well, you should have taken care of him. You said yourself. No, he was trying to tell him it was your responsibility as a king to take control. Now, I want to tell you real quickly this morning that responsibility is what God's looking for. Yeah. 
More than anything, we need to be responsible Christians. We need to be Christians that take responsibilities. I want to hear you today. I wanted to share with you responsibility, but I'm going to just kind of jump into this because I really wanted to get, give you right now. Here's the body of our message today. I want to give you the ABCs of responsibility. The ABCs of responsibility. How do we live responsible? How do we live in this world being faithful and good stewards of the things that God's blessed us with? Because I'm looking around this morning, and I know there are countless what us that are those that are watching us, also viewing us online, and God has blessed you tremendously. Amen. Amen. God has done some great things in your life. But we need to be responsible. Yeah. God didn't give you those things to get a big head. God didn't give you those blessings so you could leave your church, skip here and skip there. Right, amen. God did all these wonderful things in your life mm. so you can be responsible. Yeah. So how do we be responsible? Number one, you take your notes, write this down. This will change your life. Number one, here's the first key. I'm going to give you three keys mm -hmm. of how to live responsible. Number one, avoid making excuses. Avoid making excuses. Amen. See, when you're responsible, you find a way. Yes. But when you're irresponsible, you make excuses. That's right. Amen. You play the blame game. Mm. Right. God has not called us to make excuses. Mm -mm. God has called us to avoid and take responsibility for our actions. Yeah. Let me show you what Psalms 51 says. Psalms 51 verse 1. This is a time in which David had broken the heart of God. The great man after God's own heart, sweet singer of Israel, wrote most of our psalms. He failed at this time. He committed adultery. He cheated in a sexual relationship with the wife that belonged to Uriah. One of his soldiers in the army. And not only that, he murdered him. Because he did not, Uriah did not do what he thought he was going to do and, and have sex with him. He called him out of the battle so he could have sex with his wife so they could cover up his sin. But guess what? She got pregnant and the man of God, Uriah, who was a man, I believe, a man of integrity, he said, how can I go and have sexual relation with my wife during a time of battle? Mm. My soldiers are fighting. This is not a time of relaxation. Mm. This is not a time of satisfaction for my flesh. Mm. David, like, what am I going to do? Mm. So he put him on the front line of the battle and said, well, if he's going to not have sex with her, and he's not going to, you couldn't cover up his sin. Then guess what? He had to, he had to try to kill him. And he did put him on the front line of the battle, told them the truth, back off. Amen. Back off from the front line and let the enemy kill him. And they did. Mm, yes. Horrible crime. Yeah. Man of God. Mm -hmm. Murder an innocent man to cover up his sin. Wow. Until the Nathan, the prophet, came mm -hmm. and said, you are the man yeah. who took yeah. an innocent life. He gives him another parable. Oftentimes, God speaks to us through parables and stories. And he told him a parable of a man who had all the substance and the cattle. But he took that one sheep, that one cattle of the man that he had, that he could have, that man had everything. Yeah. But he demanded that one that only belonged to that one person. That's all he had. And he told David, you are that man. Yeah. You are that man wow. that took the one woman that was special in his life. Yep. God gave you a lot of things, David, but he didn't give you that wife. Yep. He didn't give you that woman. Mm. Broke. Unlike King Ahab, he didn't get mad. He didn't shut his mouth. He cried out to God. Yes, sir. In Psalms 51, this is his prayer of repentance. Verse 1, Ooh. Psalms 51. Have mercy, O God, on me. Yes. O God, according to your loving kindness, Tears coming down his cheek. According to your multitude of mercies, tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Yes. Wash me thoroughly yes, sir. 
from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. And then one more verse, please. Verse 4. Against you and against you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that I may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. He took responsibility. He blew it. He made mistakes. But what do we find here, church? David avoided making excuses. When you sin, and you will sin as a Christian, when you fall, you make mistakes, and you fall short of the glory of God, do you blame your husband? Do you blame your wife? Do you blame your father? That's why I committed adultery, because my father was an adulterer. <laughs> I don't see that in the Bible. I know they're generational curses, but you know what God's looking for? For you to take responsibility. Amen. Because even though you might have been recipient of a generational curse, yeah. and even though your forefathers and parents did things that were shameful and wrong, yeah. that doesn't have to be you. That's right. That doesn't have to describe your generation. That's right. You can break that generational curse off of your life. Amen. People say all the time, well, when they say, well, everybody does, does it. Yeah. Yeah. You're making excuses. Yeah. Yeah. How about, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I'm so sorry. Notice he didn't say, Bash it was Bathsheba's fault. That's the woman he committed adultery with, Bathsheba. She shouldn't have been wearing that bikini that day. It's all these women. Come on, guys. God is not going to take away all the beautiful women in your life so you can get victory over lust. He said, what? I missed that. Boom. <laughs> I said, God is not going to take all the beautiful, attractive women in your life. Mm -hmm. Man, I just got to get another job. And I'm working with all these, mm -hmm. these, these women. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, 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 I can't go there. You know, I, I, I can't take my family to the beach because all I see is bikinis. <laughs> God's not going to remove the beautiful women mm -hmm. around you mm -hmm. to give you victory. Just say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because there's a difference between desire and admire. Come on, somebody. Well, well. Yeah. I got to take off my jacket because it's getting hot in here. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. There's a difference between desiring another woman. If you're married, you should be desiring another man. If you got someone else living in your home, a, a husband, amen, women, amen. Yeah. you shouldn't have to be wanting to have a date with some other man. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. I find that spirit in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And, and, and if you're a man, you don't need to be looking for other women. Yeah. You don't need to be kissing on other women. Mm. Come on, somebody. Yes. yes. Now, I do believe you can avoid some things, but there's some women you can't avoid. There's some temptation you can't avoid. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you just got to be prayed up in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. And you got to ask the Lord to keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Amen. That's Amen. Right. Keep yeah. your eyes focused on your wife. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I read a study one day that most men, Christian men, they did a study of Christian men who fell into adultery, mm -hmm. who committed adultery against their wife. You know what they found out? That most men, Christian men, that committed adultery. They said they never wanted to do that. But their first intention was to have a healthy sexual relationship with their wife. See, that's why, that's why we got to be careful that we honor God in our marriages, in our homes. I didn't come to preach. I'm not Dr. James Dobson this morning. <laughs> but I'm going to give you this little marriage counseling tip. If everything's right at your home, that man don't need to be going nowhere else. Right, right, right. Come on. Come on. If you come home every day and your wife's got the curtains on every day, and she got that bathroom, bathrobe on, and she 
She don't look like she's taking care of herself. Come on, no wonder why he gets attracted over at, at work. No wonder why that man looking at those women dressed up already. Got the makeup on and your wife comes home and she don't put nothing on. Come on, somebody. I didn't come to preach on that. But I'm just saying, come on. Yeah. Women, look good for your husband. Amen. Mm. Yes, amen. I said, look good for your husband. Amen. amen. Not the Sancho. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Not the guys at work. Yeah, yeah. Dress up for your husband. Yeah. 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 Some of y'all women say, I'm not going to do that. That's filthy. <laughs> no, the Bible says that's a holy thing. The Bible says that when you are in that bedroom and that God is there and you got married, in fact, Marriage is the only relationship God honors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only sexual relationship that God honors is a married relationship. Yes, yes. If you're not married, get married. You can have sex the right way. Come on, somebody. Right, amen. If you ain't married, you're having sex, you're living in sin. Yes, you are. Yes. Oh, Pastor, I don't think I'm going to go back to that church next week. <laughs> That's all right. We love you anyway in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't think I'm going to go back to that church. They, they're talking about my personal life. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. David messed up mm. because when he was supposed to go to battle, he's walking on the balcony and he's looking at some right. bikinis. Right, 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 right. Yeah. See, when you do what God's called you to do, yeah. you can resist temptation. Come on, Amen. Come on, Amen. Yes. If you do what's honorable in the sight of God, God will help you to stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get married. What if he leaves me? What if she leaves me? What if he don't? What if he, you get closer to God? What if I have a boy? In fact, they also did another statistic. You know what it was? They asked the Christian men and women that are married versus the Christians or people that are non-Christians. You know what they found out? Christian marriages have more fulfilling sexual relationships than people in the world and single people. I didn't make that up. People think, well, if I don't get committed, I would just run out of free sex. That's the most stupidest thing you can do. Right. Yeah. That's right. You don't know where that person's been with. Right, 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 right. You're just opening yourself to sexual diseases. I don't know why I'm preaching on this yeah. this morning. Right, right. I don't know why I'm preaching. It wasn't even in my notes. Right. You think I don't need commitment. I don't need co covenant. Because I want freedom. That ain't freedom. That's bondage. Yes. Yeah. Preaching. Amen. Statistically speaking, the healthiest sexual relationships are married couples mm. yeah. that love God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Take that, devil. Amen. 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 It's good. It's good. So we avoid making excuses. Stop yeah. blaming him. Right. Stop blaming her. Right. Stop blaming where you live at. Yeah. And take responsibility yeah. like David. Amen. Blot out my transgressions, Lord, yeah. from me. Yeah. Not Bathsheba. Right. It's not Uriah's fault. It's not the prophet that came to me and convicted me. It's my fault. I'm the one that made that stupid decision. I should have gone to battle with my troops. I messed up. Nothing is going to change in your life until you admit you're the one that messed up. I know you're not going to like me. But you don't need to like me. Just love me. <laughs> Number two. B. Believe. Here's the second key of living responsibility. Number one. I avoid making excuses. Number two. I believe I can make a difference. Amen. Amen. Yes. When I take responsibility, I'm saying, you know what? This thing can turn around by the help and grace of God. When David... All he was, when he was a young man, this was before his sin with Bathsheba and, and Uriah, um, he was a little shepherd boy. That's all he was. His little shepherd boy. One day, his daddy, Jesse, you know what he tells him? He says, David, I need you to go and deliver some food for your two brothers that are in battle against the Philistines. And he said, yes, sir. And, oh, I love what David did. Yeah. Before he left the sheep of his pastor that he was responsible for, mm. he made sure somebody took it over. Yeah. 
See, when you're responsible, you just don't leave. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Right. yes. When you got responsibility, you don't say, I'm out of here. You take care of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, when you say, I'm done, you know who's done? You're done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's right. Yes, say it. That's right. When we go on vacation, we're going to be going in a few weeks, maybe. <laughs> my pastor and I, I mean, my wife and I, my family. Uh, we're not going to leave this church hanging. We're not going to say, guys, bye. Y'all take care of it yourself. See y'all later. We're going to make sure everything is in order. And we got delegation. And we got people over that, people over this, people over that. Amen. David did the same thing. His, his daddy told him, go deliver some food. Give him supplies to your brothers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, daddy. All right. Servant, come here. You make sure you take care of these sheep. I'm going to be gone. I don't know how long. I'm going to be gone for a few weeks. But you make sure... These sheep are fed. Give them water. Give them food. Don't let the wolves and the yeah. and the lions come and devour these. Don't, don't let the enemy come against these sheep. You take care of it. Amen. Amen. A very important key of responsibility. You ready? You don't know what it is? Delegation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Delegation. Amen. And then he goes about it. And he hears some noise. He hears a growl of the enemy. Because how many know the enemy knows how to make noise? Yeah. 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 And he hears someone mocking the armies of God. Mm -hmm. And it was the voice of the great Goliath. Mm -hmm. Stood over nine feet tall. Mm -hmm. And every time he spoke, the Bible says, the army of Israel, they trembled. They, they were shaken. They were alarmed. They didn't know what to do. They were so scared of him. Nobody. He said... Goliath said, pick a man. We're going to decide who's got victory today. You pick a man on your side. I'm going to stand for the Philistines. We're not going to have to fight the army of Israel versus the army of, or the Philistines. It's going to be decided by one man. Who's going to stand up? Everybody was like this. <laughs> One man. Yeah. Just give me one man. Mm. And we'll decide who gets the victory. And David heard that. All he was doing was delivering pizza from H-E-B. That's all. <laughs> he was just an H-E-B delivery driver. Right. But how many know God can turn an H-E-B delivery driver right. into a mighty warrior for the right. kingdom of God? Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. He said, who's talking like that? He doesn't know that we serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Woo. He doesn't know that we serve the God who split the Red Sea when Pharaoh and his army tried to come against the people of God. Yeah. Yeah. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Yeah. That's right. yes. All he was doing was delivering some cheese yeah. and some supplies yeah. to his brothers, but he put it down and he heard them talk. He said, we Somebody needs to do something. Why, why, why aren't y'all standing up? Mm. King Saul was the, was the tallest of them all and he didn't want to do nothing with him. Mm. He said, what happens if I fight him? Well, you get, you get the king's daughter. You get tax exemption. Yeah, that's good. Mm. That's good. <laughs> and you get a pretty good salary. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. He said, tell me again. Those are the three things that they said. If anybody kills Goliath, you get tax exempt status. Yes. How many would like to not have to pay taxes for the rest of your life? Come on, somebody. All right. Yeah. And then you're going to get a lot of money. You're going to have a good salary. Mm. And then, for a bonus, you get the king's daughter. <laughs> wow. My, 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 my. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe the king's daughter didn't wear makeup. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> I don't believe, you know, we used to make fun. I'm sorry, I got to say this. I grew up in a Pentecostal denomination. It felt like an abomination, but it was a denomination. <laughs> My wife was brought up Catholic. How many of were brought up Catholic? Yes, All right. I was brought up Concilio, mm -hmm. Pentecostal. Yeah. We were called Cladic. You know what Cladic stands for? Concilio Latino Americano de Iglesias Cristianas. Hallelujah. We even have our own song. You believe it? We have our own song. 
It goes like this. El Concilio Latinoamericano de Iglesias Cristianas triunfará. <laughs> I kid you not. And the president used to live in, in, the, in the valley, in Harlington, Brownsville area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had a church in Dallas. And when he showed up, because he would visit periodically different churches to see how they were doing. Wow. Make sure that none of the women were wearing makeup. Right, 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 right. Because the women were not allowed to wear makeup in our church. In the concilio, in the cladic right. seminary, the women couldn't even shave their legs. Right, 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 right. Somebody yeah. say, help me, Jesus, yeah. help me, oh, Jesus. Right. Help me, Jesus. Y'all think it's tight here, boy. Yeah. Yeah. So the president, if he showed up, like right now, if the president would show up during the sermon, everything had to stop. Yeah. And you had to stop. And they would say, okay, hermanos, en español, hermanos, está el presidente, hermano Muniz, or whoever it was. And they would say, let's sing the song. And they would get another song called, Siga adelante, that's right. Siga adelante. I was like, what in the yeah. world? <laughs> We used to make fun of the ladies because the older ladies, yeah. <laughs> the older ladies used to have their hair in a bun, yeah. like this. You ever seen those Amish women? Yeah. Okay, you ever seen those religious people? Yeah. There were some of y'all, those women, uh, they had, uh, like, they were, they had buns. They put their hair in buns. Yeah. Sister's fixing her hair right now. And, uh, they had buns. <laughs> and we used to make fun of them. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all got to forgive me. Y'all got to forgive me. I repented. It's under the blood. God has forgiven me. But I didn't know any better back then as a teenager. And I used to say, look at all those sisters. They're in bondage. Not bondage, but bondage. Bondage. That's right. Bondage. They're in bondage. Yeah. You know, they had their hair with the bun. I'm not talking about the honey bun that you eat that snack with your coffee. Oh, they had buns and David, I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry. David said, I'll take him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take the challenge. I mean, I think I can handle him. He's nothing compared to God. That's right, right. Amen. Right. He comes with a sword and a spear and a shield. But I come in the name of the Lord God of Israel. Hallelujah. And you know what happened, right? You read this story. He knocks him out with one stone. He had five stones. You know why? Because Goliath had four of the brothers. So just in case the bros showed up, he got something for the bros too. And you know what happened to the story? He fell down and uh, David, I'm sorry, Goliath, he got some insurance that day. He got a piece of the rock. Come on, somebody. <laughs> And David, he really got motivated. He moved up ahead. Like he, uh, he really moved ahead. Cause yeah. he got ahead. Come on, somebody, yeah. Yeah. cut off that head after he killed him. Yeah, yeah. But here's what I want you to see: First Samuel seventeen thirty-two. First Samuel seventeen thirty-two. Our second key in living responsible lives is we must believe we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. David said to Saul. Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Yes, sir. I'm going to go. You need to tell that to yourself. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's right. They hire you for a job. It might be something new. It might be something you've never been accustomed to. But you say, I can knock this Goliath off. Amen. How do you know that you might become an expert in that field one day? Right. Yeah, that's right. yes. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Yes, right. yes, yes. God's going to bless you in a job, but it's not going to be like the previous job. Mm. God's going to bless some of you today. Maybe you're watching. Mm. It's not going to be in the same occupation. Mm. It's not going to be in the same atmosphere. It's not going to be in the same environment. You know, a lot of us, we just, you know, we go to church and, and we just want to hear the same old songs all the time. And this church, we like to mix it up. Yeah. Man. I don't know about you, but when I go to Popeye's, I like mixed chicken. Come on. When I go to churches, I like some mixed chicken. Yeah. Yeah. We try to throw in new songs every now and then. Well, how come they don't sing that old song? Because we ain't singing the old songs no more. Yeah. Every now and then, we'll throw in some coritos with some coritos. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. 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 
And by the way, there's nothing like the hymns of the church. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. We said, what's a hymn? It's a song about him. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you what, I'm trying to get y'all happy. Some of y'all still looking at me like you're baptized in Pikachu. <laughs> when is this going to be over? <laughs> it's going to be done when we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Church is going to be over when we're over. Yeah. But not right now. One last point. <laughs> so how do we live responsibly? Stop making excuses. Yep. Mm. Avoid making excuses. It's nobody's fault but mine. If we live like that, with that perspective, with that attitude, change will come. Right. Amen. Victory will come. Right. Mm. Husbands, if you want your wives to change, you change first. Right, 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 right. Mm. Wives, if you want your husband to change, you change. Amen. Make them some frijoles. Come on, somebody. Come on. But husband, you got to do your part too because ain't nobody want to follow a parked car. Amen. Mm. That's right. right. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Man, you got to do what God's called you to do. And then they'll, they'll fall. And then we believe we can, you know, like David, I can make a difference. Amen. I'm going to take responsibility. Nobody wants to step out and fight Goliath. I will. Okay, so Saul's trying to put on his armor. He said, no, it didn't fit. So remember, when you take responsibility, don't try to be like somebody else. That's right. Amen. When they hire you for a job, and, you know, there's always going to be somebody on the job that says, well, that's not the way she used to do it. Well, I ain't she. That ain't the way they used to do it. I ain't there. Yeah, right. Amen. I don't, how come pastor don't do it little bilingual? Because we ain't bilingual. Amen, that's right. Find a bilingual church and be blessed. Glory to God. That's right, yes. I, I, I love bilingual churches. I, I went to a bilingual church. I went to an all Spanish church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that ain't going to always happen here. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Be yourself. Yeah. Mm, look at somebody and say, I think pastor's talking about me. Right. Just be yourself. Be yourself. My Lord. Don't let nobody put you in a box. Don't let nobody say you got to work like she works. You got to do what she does. And no, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Yes, sir. I'm not going against company policy. I'm not going against what I need to do. Everything's legit. Everything's right. But I'm going to do it the way God's called me to do it. I'm going to do it the way God's anointed me to do it. I'm going to do it the way the anointing is on my life. I can't sing like her and I don't want to sing like her. I can't preach like him and I don't want to preach like him. I want to preach the way Pastor Mark preaches. Yes, amen. I want to sing the way Pastor Mark sings. Mm. Come on, somebody. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. You be yourself. Yes. Worship God in your own individual personality. Yes, yes. Mm. I know some of you worship the Lord like this. Some of you like to you you know, like like to act like you're drinking a cup or something. Some of you just put up one hand. Some of you got one hand in your pocket and one hand up. Some of you ain't going to put up no hand. <laughs> Some of you got more of that serious worship. <laughs> Some of you got that rocking chair worship. <laughs> Some of you got that wave offering worship. <laughs> Some of you like to shout. Some of you like to be quiet. You worship the way you worship. Yeah. You worship the way that comes from your heart. Yeah. As long as it's from your heart, yeah. as long as it's from your spirit, yeah. as long as you do it under God, you worship the way God's called you to worship. Yeah. And then the last point. Here's the third way we live responsibly. Is we commit to finishing the task. If you start something, finish it. If you're doing something and the Lord, you know, a lot of times people have told me in the past, when I was working as a youth pastor, associate pastor, and a senior pastor, lead, a lead pastor now, I've had people tell me they have the right heart. They're, they didn't mean wrong. But they were saying, Pastor, I got this wonderful idea. I said, okay, go ahead and tell me. Yeah, I just think, man, we can go, we can load up an ice chest and, you know, we can get some waters and we can hang out over here in the street corner and just pass out some waters and give some water bottles to people and, uh, and give them some little tracks. And um, what do you think about that? I said, that's good. He goes, okay, well, when, they, they said, so when, when, when can we start it? Whenever you're ready. I said, why are you waiting on me? No, 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 Pastor, we want you to get the water bottles and we want you to go and, and, and we want you to you know, be a part of it. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Was that my idea or was that your idea? Amen. You know why people present ideas but they don't want to do it? Because they want to get the credit. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my idea. Yeah. Yeah. If it's your idea, do something with the idea. Yeah. Amen, yeah. amen. Yeah. Don't wait on your pastor. Don't wait on your brothers. Don't wait on your sisters. You do it. Yeah. Amen. Look at what Luke 14 says. Mm. Well, that, that went over real well. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> good. Somebody said, well, I ain't going to share my ideas. That's right. <laughs> you better think twice before you share an idea with me. Because I'm going to say, well, tell me, sister, how can we make it happen? Yeah. Tell me, brother, what are you going to do? When, who, who, you going to buy the first Bible of Yes, amen. I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah. Amen. What are you going to do yeah. to make it happen? No, 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 no. I'm not saying I'm going to do it. I just want to present the idea. Wrong. Yeah. yeah. You missed the message today. Yeah. You got to take responsibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Luke 14, 28. Luke 14, 28. You got to finish. Be committed to finishing. Which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost? Whether he has enough to finish it. Let's read another couple of verses. 29. Lest after he laid the foundation and is not able to finish, that all who see it begin to mock him. Verse 30. For this, this man began, watch, he began to build, but he wasn't able to what? Finish. To finish it. Mm -hmm. Don't start something mm. you can't finish. If God's called you, responsibility is a husband. Don't, don't stop being a husband because you have a bad day. Don't stop being a good wife because you have a bad day. Mm -hmm. I encourage you today. Finish that marriage. It's not just how you start. It's how you finish. Keep doing the right thing. I'm not saying God moves us around sometimes. Sometimes against our own will, Right? Sometimes when you go through a divorce, for example, it, it's not, sometimes it's out of your control. Because you really can't have a restoration in a marriage right. until both parties are willing yep. to come together. Yes. So yes. what do you do when it's out of your control? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe the Lord's saying, move on. Maybe the Lord's saying, put a period on it. Mm -hmm. But don't ever stop just because you're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. That should be the last resort. That should Divorce... Separation should always be the last option. Yes, yes. I'm trying to help somebody. Amen, amen, amen. That should always be at the bottom of the list. Mm. There should always be reconciliation. That should be your first goal. Reconciliation, restoration. But if it's out of your control, then maybe you do need to move on. Mm. But the Lord will show you. Yes. If you seek counsel, talk to your pastor. They'll advise you. They'll give you some good biblical recommendations. Mm -hmm. But the point is, let her see. In order for us to be responsible, finish what you start. Don't just walk out like that story. You build a building, you build a tower. Guess what happens when, have, have y'all seen just like foundation out in the open? Like what happened to that building? There's a, there's a, there's a gas station that I pass by every day when I go to work. Monday through Friday when I go to work. And uh, it's it was built, but it never opened. Mm -hmm. It's built like a gas station. Yeah. In fact, it looks like a gas station. It's supposed to be a gas station. Mm -hmm. But that was about two years ago, oh. several years ago. Oh. Now, and it's been vacant. You're like, what happened, right? What's the first thing we say? Man, what happened to that building? What happened? And then you see other buildings. Boom, 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 boom. They grow, they go, they go up faster than they even remember when they first laid concrete on. Mm -hmm. Let that be said of us. And when we start something, we finish it. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That's good. That's good. And when we come to church, man, we stay and we say, God, I want everything that you have for me. Yes. So did this message bless anybody today? Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Guys, have you come on up on the praise team? Amen. And uh, if Sister Esther can, I know she's busy in the back, but we'll just kind of. Thank you, sir. Can I get you to stand to your feet this Sunday morning? Responsibility. That's what God's looking for. You know, 
I heard a story about a patient that was lying on a hospital bed one day in a hospital. And she accidentally spilled some water in her cup next to her. You know how they have those tables right there in the hospital room? And she accidentally spilled the water. And she didn't know who to call at first, so the first response was, I'm gonna call the nurse assistant. So she gets on that button, you know, that button that they have right there by the hospital bed, right? And she punched the button for the nurse. She says, can I have a nurse aid? I accidentally spilled some water on the floor and I'm afraid when I get off the bed, she would periodically get off the bed and go, you know, maybe go to the restroom or walk the hallway or whatever. Uh, I don't want to fall, she said. I don't want to fall and slip on the water. So can you please send a nurse aide to help me? The nurse aide came to her assistance to wipe up the water, but she looked down. The nurse aide looked down at the water, spilled. She said, oh no ma'am, oh no ma'am. We have a company policy that when there's a spill of water or juice or whatever, um, if it's large spill, company policy says don't wipe it up, don't clean it. In fact, she said, this is a job for the housekeepers. Any housekeepers here this morning? Okay. It's a job for the housekeepers. And the patient's like, what are you talking about? And she's like, I don't care who does it, but just somebody clean it. Yeah. She says, so hold on, ma'am. We'll get it cleaned up. Let me call my housekeeping. That nurse's aide called the housekeeper, the housekeeper department, and said, we got a spill that needs your attention in room so-and-so, would you please come and clean it because it's too big for us to clean. We can't do it. We only are supposed to handle, our boss tells us and company policy tells us we're only supposed to pick up small spills, wipe them down. This is way out of our capacity. All right, we'll go up there. They send a housekeeper up and they look at that spill. And like that nurse is in, she's looking at that spill. I'm sorry, it's too small for us. <laughs> and what? And no, 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 she tells the patient. She said, I don't know why they send us up here. This is the job for the nurses aid. <laughs> this is not big enough for us in the housekeeping department. So the nurses aid is gonna happen to come back. And she tells her, ma'am, I'm sorry, the housekeeper. I'm sorry, but this is against our policy. She said, no. You need to be responsible to clean it up. No, you're responsible. They go back and forth. No, it's you. 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 And the patient's like, really? Somebody say, really? Really? The housekeeper said it was too small. The nurse's aide said the spill was too big. Which one was right? So you know what the patient did? She got a pitcher of water. And she throws it all over the floor. He said, now do y'all know who is responsible for it now? <laughs> so many of us, yes. we're blaming the housekeeper. You clean it up. Yeah. Yeah. You got a marriage that ain't happy. You're not happy. It's my husband's fault. It's the housekeeper. My church is not being blessed the way I want it to be blessed. And, 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 and we're not doing what God wants us to do. And I, I'm just not happy anymore when I come to church. And we blame the pastor. Yeah. We blame the housekeeper. We blame the nurse's aide. And God said, why don't you just clean up the mess? That's right. Why don't you take responsibility? That's right. Amen. If everybody, if the measure of this church was based on your attendance, yeah. on your punctuality, how would the church be? Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes. If we could measure the success of this church by your attendance every Sunday, by your attendance every Wednesday, if you come, 
by your punctuality, how would this church be? Oh no, it's, it's, it's pastor's job. He's supposed to unlock the church. He's supposed to lock the church. He's supposed to feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. But you need to feed yourself. When I come and I feed you, then I'll go feed you. But if you're just relying on me to feed you, you're going to be an up and down Christian. Feed yourself Monday through Saturday. And when you come Sunday, you're going to be like, wow. That was confirmation when the Lord spoke to me. Yes, yes. Feed yourself. Take responsibility for your own spiritual actions. Because there's wonderful opportunities awaiting you. Yes. There's wonderful doors God has for you. Amen. If you believe this morning with me that God has wonderful, miraculous doors awaiting you, give the Lord praise and give the Lord glory. Now let's go a step further. Lift your hands and say, I receive. Say this prayer after me right there where you're standing. With your hands lifted up to Jesus. Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I love you. Come on, lift your voice. Say, I love you. With all my heart. I receive your word today. Of responsibility. With humility in my heart. With meekness in my spirit. Thank you, God. For speaking to me. Through your servant. I needed to hear this word, Lord. And I just want to say thank you, God. For all the blessings you've given me. I just want to say thank you, Lord. For all the wonderful things that you've done in my life. Now just take about 50 seconds and thank them in your own words right there. Just thank them. Thank them for that new house, that new car, that, that miracle in your body, that healing in your body. Come on. Just thank them. Come on. Take about 30 seconds and just worship them and thank them. Thank them from that door of work, that opportunity, that job, that, that job. Thank you for that roof over your head. Thank them. Thank them. Thank them for your loved ones. Thank them for your husband that's saved. Thank them for your wife that's saved. Thank them for your children, your grandchildren. Come on. Come on, I feel the love of God in this room. I feel the love of Jesus in this room. He's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. He's not angry at you. He wants you blessed. He wants you encouraged. We started out this morning saying God wants us to be edified. Come on, edify yourself. Bless yourself. Encourage yourself today. We honor your word, God. We receive your word. Come on, drink it in. Drink it in. The living water, drink it in. If you got a prayer language, I'll begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now.
back on Wednesday, amen, it will be a unique, special service Wednesday night, amen, in the house of God at 730. And before we go, remember, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is 